One of the dangers of all of this is it ignores what I call the metacosm. There are boundaries to the reality, to our physical reality. Those are well known today, by the way. I don't want to touch on that. I'm going to use Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man as a representation of the reach of man. Okay, that just rep that represents you and me. And if I and I'm going to let on the diagram up there, let size increase to the right. Bigness is the right, smallness to the left. Okay. Now, as we look towards things that are larger than ourselves. We'll call that collectively the macrocosm. And that plunges you into the study of astronomy and astrophysics and topics like that. 20th century science, the great discovery of 20th century science, is that the universe is finite. It's not infinite. It may be expanding, but it's finite. So the macrocosm, there's a limit to the size of the universe. And because there is, that's what gives rise to these speculations called the Big Bang and whatever. We know it had a beginning, and we know that it'll ultimately have an end. Let's go the other way. Let's look at smallness. And now we'll call that the microcosm. When you get into this world, it gets weirder than any of the others. It leads with quantum physics and subatomic particles. And whether you're talking about length, mass, energy, or time, you discover that everything is small has a limit to how small it can be. See, you and I would think that if I took a piece of string, I'd cut it in half, no problem. I'd take the half, I, I could cut it in half. It might get too small to literally do, but your thinking is, whatever I've got left, I can cut in half. It turns out, when you get to 10 to minus 33 centimeters, that's very small, it has what they call non-locality. We now, and it's been proven in the laboratory, every photon in the universe knows exactly what every other photon in the universe is doing in a certain sense. But the main point is there is a limit to smallness. Uh, the, the ancient Hebrew sages, Nachmanides, from his, from his uh, study of the book of Genesis, concluded that the universe has 10 dimensions, only four are knowable, six are not knowable. That's in his writings in the 13th century. We've spent hundreds of millions of dollars creating atomic accelerators, which have now revealed to us that the universe has, apparently, 10 dimensions. Four are directly discernible. Six we know are there but can't get at. So we've spent all that money what, discovering what Nachmanides learned by just studying the Hebrew text of the book of Genesis. So we live in a, in a simulation that's limited to four direct dimensions we can experience. And by the way, not only is what the Bible says, it lists them in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18, our four dimensions that we have. So it's no surprise to Paul, if you will. But we now also have knowledge that there's six other dimensions that we can't get at directly. Now, we can glibly call that the spiritual world or something. This physical reality we're in is embedded in something larger, which we'll call the metacosm. And uh, that's the domain when you start studying angels. We have a whole background around that one. And that's what we think, what we suspect, don't know, we suspect is the domain of the UFOs because we now know they're trans-dimensional. Not tra they're not intergalactical, they're trans-dimensional. Our universe is but a shadow of a larger reality. Scientific American, June of 2005. Yeah. Problem with transhumanism, it ignores the metacosm. 